of the biggest challenge is sea surge itself. So what you see here, what we call is the hydrophone. Okay, so the hydrophone basically allows us to detect the sonar pings that comes off a uh, what we call an underwater locator beacon that's usually fixed onto a flight recorder. It emits a specific uh, ping itself and this system will actually pick it up and once we hear it, we start to zoom in to the area where we think the recorders may possibly be at. Yeah, yep. I hear it. All right. Flight recorders are typically um, made up of one section which is called a flight data recorder and the other section is called the cockpit voice recorder. So when a recorder comes to us, you can typically see that it may be in one of two conditions. This is in a wonderful condition where it's, everything is serviceable, we do not need to do anything much, but assuming there has been uh, significant damage to this recorder, this portion of the recorder is typically sacrificial. What recorder specialists typically go for is the uh, memory chip that is stored within this crash survivable memory unit. What will then happen is that we'll do some electrical checks and if we do find some damages, we'll then move on to this station here where we will do a resoldering of the ribbon cable itself. And in certain situations where there appears to be more significant damage to the memory chips itself, we would actually look at the memory chip itself under the microscope to look for cracks, damages or even debris that may affect or compromise the operation of the chip. So when data is downloaded from the flight data recorder, it essentially comes out as a whole series of just ones and zeros in binary data. And we'll look at where the data, specific bits of data is located, and how do we translate it back to usable units for us to proceed with our analysis. So it's kind of like transforming this whole ones and zeros, which is kind of like an organized mess, into something that is totally usable. So once the data has been properly translated, you can then see that it turns out as individual parameters such as pitch angle, time, speed, power for example, and these are more relatable terms that we use. So typically we'll look across three sets of data. The animation itself gives us a great overall picture of roughly what happened, and then we'll actually look specifically at the charts, and our software allows us to look across the charts, the animation, and of course the individual parameters all at one go. This is where we perform the transcription and listening of uh, cockpit voice recordings. It essentially records audio data that typically involves conversation between the pilots, the pilots with the external parties like the air traffic controller, cabin crew and potentially other aircraft. In situations where the noise information is very noisy, we'll then have to apply special techniques that involves removing of specific noise information and we'll try to attempt to uncover the audio that was being recorded, which is what we want to analyze the information. When we have a combination of voice data and the parametric data from the flight data recorder, it allows us to have a much better uh, view of what actually happened in the cockpit and potentially understand the circumstances of the occurrence.